So uh, my name is Andrzej Czertik. I work at Los Alamos National Lab and the co-authors Nikhil, Ankit, Milan, Peter, Zag, Neil, Rohit, Amir and Arian um, helped out either contributed code to L4 Trend or helped test it or helped with the presentation or helped me uh, brainstorm all kinds of design decisions. So the outline, I'll present the motivation, then I'll show a demo, hopefully it will work. Uh, then I'll talk about architecture of L4 Trend. Uh, then current status and future plans and conclusions. So uh, the motivation. Uh, so I've been using Fortran for about 10 years, almost daily is my main uh, language. Um, and uh, overall for about 15 years. So I initially thought that 10 years is a long time, but then, uh, then I talked to um, a few um, <clears throat> standards committee members and they told me that in Fortran long time means over 50 years. So, so, it's, so 10 years is not a long time. Um, so as a user, I would, uh, you know, as all of you pretty much I probably would agree, a lot of things that are missing in Fortran. And so I listed just a few. Um, what I would like as a user is, uh, well, of course, cross-platform compilation to binaries. And you would think that's obvious, but as many of you know, if you compile on Windows, for example, I want to link with MSVC, we're running all kinds of problems that that just should not be happening. Um, the next big one is I really would like interactivity like Python. I would like Fortran to be used and usable like Python from a Jupyter Notebook interactively, interactive plotting, in, interactive exploration, interactive uh, usage of uh, production codes, uh, all of that. Uh, I would like nice error messages and warnings. Uh, Rust is I think the leading, I would say, language and compiler that uh, is doing awesome in this arena. I would like, you know, the compiler knows everything. It knows the types, knows everything. I would like it to help me as a developer. Uh, so to be, and, and also I would like the compiler to warn me about things that maybe I should not be using as a user. Uh, then of course, automatic interoperability with other languages. Uh, I would like automatic formatting. I would like a language server for uh, editors like VS Code to help um, navigate, uh, to tell you the types and all that stuff. I uh, would like for Tran to run on modern architectures like GPU. That might be the single most important thing that we have to do as a community. Um, all the other things I mentioned are nice to have, but if you don't have them, fine. But uh, the fact that we don't have a path forward to run on GPUs means that managers at big companies and labs are literally forced to move away from Fortran and use C++ and the libraries in there and the ecosystem in there and we have to fix it. Um, and the way to fix that is we have to have compilers um, we, that, that, that can run on GPUs. Um, and then I would like a compiler that has a clean design and usable as a library. That's a big one and I'll talk about it later. And of course, help with static analysis and stuff like that. And all of that I would like to be facilitated by a modern compiler. So um, about three years ago, I think or two, two years ago, uh, I decided, well, let's see if uh, we can write a prototype to show that all of this is possible. And then let's go from there. So demo time, um, you can see the link to l 4 Trans web page. Um, so if you go there, um, this is what you will see. And I'll launch it in binder first. Let's see if it works. Um, so it will launch a Jupyter notebook and it's using the l 4 Tran as a kernel to Jupyter. And so every cell in that notebook will be executed via the, uh, the kernel. Um, and so this, uh, what you will see, this is a prototype of l 4 Tran written in Python, um, because I use Python to kind of to get started. And then I am in the process of rewriting a to C++ and I'll talk about it later. So let's look at what uh, l 4 Tran can do. So what you see is a Jupyter notebook and it looks like Python except that it's Fortran. What you see is Fortran. Um, you and as Fortran, you have to declare variables. Um, essentially think of this as a regular Fortran and on a global scope in Fortran, you can have modules, programs, subroutines and functions. That's, a, that's regular Fortran 2018 and common blocks, but th those are obsolete. So I extended that, we extended that with also allowing expressions. So for example, the cell number one is an expression um, and also statements. For example, the cell number five is a statement and also declarations. Um, and then, so you can declare a function, it will, and you can evaluate it in some kind of an expression also. 
uh, you can redeclare a function and just like in Python, it will shadow the previous declaration. And so in this case, you get, get the different answer. Uh, you can do for loops, if statements, print. So when you print in the Jupyter notebook, the kernel you know, sends the output uh, to the notebook so that you can see it. Um, so plotting, I would like to be able to plot interactively from Fortran, exactly as you see. This is, this is a prototype, so the plot function has just the three y coordinates and, and, and it's using methodlib underneath to do the plotting. And you know, you, I can modify um, the, the, the last y coordinate and redraw so you can see it's, it's, it's life and it works. Um, now let's talk about it a little bit, kind of coming to, into the internals to see how this works. So each cell is first parsed to AST. That's the very first step the compiler does. So as, as an example to kind of show how this works, this for loop becomes, this shows the example of AST for this for loop. Each AST node um, is representing some feature like a do or state statement or assignment and so on or variable. Uh, and AST, for those who don't know, AST stands for abstract syntax tree. So it's a tree with the abstract syntax. It's abstracting the syntax. Um, and then in this prototype, the next step, it goes, uh, it does semantic analysis and then emits LLVM code. And you can see the LLVM code that's, th that, and this is after optimization. So it's already optimized. And, and then LLVM is used to produce assembly, um, as you can see here. Um, and those of you who don't know what LLVM is, so the previous talk from Gary, I think hopefully it was a good introduction. LLVM is a library that allows, uh, that has compiler um, uh, tool chains that, and as an intermediate representation, and that's what you see right, right here. Um, and then LLVM can take it and optimize it and also generate assembly and machine code uh, and also load it to memory and execute it um, or generate the binary. So I think that's good for the introduction, uh, for the demo, I mean. Now let's get back to uh, the presentation. So let's talk about the architecture a little bit. Um, so on, on this graph in the left uh, bottom corner is the source code. So that's the start, it's the Fortran source code. So the next, so the next step the compiler does is it transforms it to AST, abstract syntax tree. And you can see arrows going up and down. That means uh, that the AST can also be transformed back to source code. And the L4Tran compiler can do that. And I should also mention this already, um, I'm talking about the C++ production implementation of L4Tran. This is how it's designed. So AST is just, you can think of it as a local abstraction. So it abstracts things like white space and um, all kinds of things in Fortran, like different kinds of writing, if statements and so on. Um, so it's syntax independent at that point, but it's still local. In other words, uh, um, it doesn't do semantic analysis. Your variables might have different types, incompatible types, and it, on the AST level, it doesn't know anything about that. And the other thing to know is that AST is an independent representation. In other words, once you get to AST, you don't have to you don't need to know oh, the source code anymore. You don't have to have it. All you need to do is have to know is the AST, has all the information. So the next step from AST is uh, a thing we call ASR, Abstract Semantic Representation, ASR. So that's the step up. Um, what that means is it takes the AST and creates a new representation, new standalone representation that contains all the semantics and all the semantics is checked. Uh, and so if L4Tran gives you back ASR, it means it's a valid Fortran code, it's uh, semantically valid, all the types agree, uh, all the errors that you get in a typical compiler, you would already get. Uh, so if, it, if you get ASR back, it means everything works. And ASR is, so ASR has a symbol table. It uh, is, is not redundant. In other words, it doesn't have nodes for declarations because those are redundant at that point. They are part of the symbol table. Um, and then it's essentially ready for code generation. And then L4Tran has multiple backends. So the main backend is LLVM. Um, and so ASR then gets transformed to LLVM and LLVM then can generate a binary or uh, evaluate interactively. Uh, another backend that we have or we are working on is a C++ backend. 
which um, is um, the, the way it works is it translates for Tranco to C++. So that has many use, uses. Uh, one is for people that want to move away from Fortran, uh, they can use it to transform their Fortran code to C++ or will be once, once this works. Um, the other usage is um, if you have a C++ code but you want to contribute and write some algorithm in Fortran but you don't want to introduce as a Fortran dependency, you can use that also. Um, the Python backend, uh, it, it's not done yet but it's something we would like to have. Uh, there are two options there. Uh, it could either be used for um, translating to Python and NumPy, or uh, the better uh, use case is we would like to create automatic Python wrappers because the compiler at the ASR level, it knows all the types. It's, it's, um, it's easy to produce automatic Python wrappers and the same with other languages. Um, and then, yeah, let's see. So I think we cover most of it here. One last thing I would say is that the AST and ASR are um, kind of exposed to the user. So l 4 is written as a library. And as a user, now I mean like a developer, you can use ASR to do anything you want. Um, you can think of it as um, almost like a SymPy expression. So SymPy is a library in Python that I started a long time ago for symbolic manipulation, something like Mathematica or Maple. It allows you to represent um, symbolic expressions and manipulate them. And it turns out SymPy itself actually is, is a compiler because SymPy can parse sort of expressions from many various input formats. It can uh, manipulate them and it can also generate uh, code, including LLVM and even compile to the binaries. So, uh, and so L4Tran is a compile like that too. And ASR, you can think of it as, as an expression that is given back to you if you want it, if you want to do something with it. And you can manipulate it or will be able to manipulate it and also generate all kinds of things out of it, like Python wrappers, Julia wrappers, if you want to, and so on. So um, a few more points. So I already mentioned AST and ASR are the standalone representations. Uh, users can target ASR and AST. Uh, and on the previous slide, ASR can be lowered back to AST and AST back to source code. So what that means is that if you want to generate Fortran code, the easiest is to generate this ASR and then let L Fortran take care of generating the correct AST and correct source code, correctly formatted and properly checked. Um, and then ASR, and that kind of ties to the talk, um, by Thomas about a G4 trend, uh, where the front end does all kinds of optimizations. Uh, it, th those would be done later on on this ASR level, things like inlining, loop optimizations, and so on. Um, and because you can transform it back to Fortran, you can show the end result as, a, as Fortran code to the user, which uh, as a user, I would really like to, uh, to make the, and, uh, and the other thing, of course, I would like is to e examine the LLVM code. Uh, the only issue is that LLVM is a little bit too low level. And so for, you know, many, as a Fortran user, what I would really like is to see what the compiler is doing. Uh, when I'm trying to write a perf code for, that has to have high performance, I would like to know how the compiler is optimizing it and what it, what is it really doing underneath. So being able to return the result as Fortran code or perhaps annotated Fortran code uh, would be much better than the low level LLVM code. Um, and so, yeah, so, so this architecture will allow the compiler to be more transparent and helpful to the user and also to write all kinds of tools. So the current status is uh, the prototype that you saw in the notebook that's written in Python. It works interactively on all platforms, Linux, Mac OS and Windows, and can compile and run simple programs. And it's a proof of concept validating these ideas that this actually can be done, that Fortran can be um, executed interactively and um, and also the architecture of the compiler. And so the production version that, that what I've been, we've been working on for the past year, we are rewriting all of this to C++ um, and, and we are very close to, to make it usable both interactively and to compile, um, but they're not there yet. Um, we, only very simple things work, but the, all the architecture pieces are all already there. Um, so it has a parser in C++, uh, we can do the semantics, it can generate LLVM. We just have to now uh, get it up to speed to get first users. Uh, one of the side effects I should say rewriting in C++ is that uh, 
it can uh, parse very quickly. It is a very fast compilation. The way this is achieved is um, essentially using the same, my experience with developing SimPy and also SimEngine. SimEngine is a library we started about maybe eight years ago, which takes SimPy and asks the question, what's the fastest way to do these manipulations? And we eventually ended up writing it in C++ and spent a lot of time figuring out how to best represent the tree in memory and manipulate it as quickly as possible and so on, memory management. And I use the same experience um, in, in designing um, how l works inside. And as a side effect, it's very, very fast, at least so far. Um, and then right now we are working with LLVM on the LLVM and C++ backends. So future plans. Um, so in the near future, our goal is to release the first production version, that means the C++, and to get first users. And I'm kind of targeting a few weeks from now. Um, our goal is to parse all of Fortran 2018 to AST. Um, it will still take um, months. We'll simply um, work on it as uh, we can. And then from AST to ASR, we'll simply um, I have to eventually get all the semantics and everything working. Um, and also our goal is to get both the C++ and LLVM backends usable so that people can start playing with it and use it for, with simple projects. And then down the road, of course, we want to implement all the other things um, from the motivation. Um, so this is the end of my uh, prepared presentation. And I think we have a few minutes for um, questions. So let me see if we have any. Um, so first question is about audio out of sync, so I apologize for that. Uh, it, it, next question is, would the AST and ASR representation be a good starting point for static analysis? Yes. Uh, I'm thinking of things like evaluate the quality or identify doji code. Yes. So ASR would be the best uh, because ASR is all the types and everything. And I would like to have a, like a pedantic flag or, or maybe call, you can call it differently, maybe like a subset, you can call it, that would check uh, as warnings or even errors, things like don't use common block, uh, don't, you know, don't, um, don't use impl implied save, uh, don't, um, you know, declare your variables, use implicit none, um, um, you know, all, all these, all these coding practice. And there's a lot of them, a lot of them. Uh, oh, things like floating point, you know, when you do like A equals one dot, it becomes single uh, precision, but you would like a double precision or if that's, you know, and because the compiler knows the types, it can really, it can really clean up the code. And I noticed, you know, when newcomers to Fortran, when they code, um, I noticed, um, just, just these basic things that almost everybody makes, including myself, and almost 99% of them can be checked by a compiler. And so if the compiler by default was giving such warnings at least, I can guarantee, you know, people would just be very quickly would kind of fix all these things themselves. And so it would just improve the quality of Fortran code overall. Let's go, next question. Uh, good auto formatter, yes. Uh, good, yeah, uh, that was one of my, yes. Yes, yeah, so AST, uh, that for auto formatting, typically only need the AST. So going from AST back to Fortran. Uh, of course, needs to be configurable. And there are other, actually, we can talk about it more. There are other issues there um, related to, for auto formatter, you want to preserve comments. And you want to also preserve some of the white space, maybe. So it gets a little more complicated. The AST in L Fortran, as with most compilers, it tracks, it, it knows where things come from, the original source line and so on. but. Um, you want to be able to actually do one-to-one -one translation between AST and the original source codes for a good auto formatter. So some more brainstorming is needed, but if you only, but if you are okay with the default formatting, then, then it can be done. Um, I'm wondering what the plot API is. People using notebooks are used to something full featured like Matplotlib, I guess. Yeah, so uh, the way it would work is that people would write a library like Matplotlib in Fortran, and it would simply do the plotting. The reason I kind of created the magic function plot is to show that this can be done uh, and how it can be done. Um, of course, this, this would not be part of the compiler. This would be part of the library. But you know, I, I showed it as an example how it, it would be used as a user. How does the Fortran tie with a flank LLVM effort, if at all? So the, old, the classic flank effort, um, I started L Fortran after studying the source code of the classic flank and looked at it if it can be adapted to become interactive compiler. That was my first thing I wanted to do. And realized that 
I, I, that would take years of effort. So at that point, I realized, you know, I might as well write a compiler from scratch. It would be easier than, than, than doing that. And far, interestingly enough, the NVIDIA developers, at probably the same month, actually even, uh, realized the same thing and started the F18 effort. So the F18 effort and L4 term started almost to the same month. Uh, we just didn't know about each other for a long time. Uh, and after we got to know each other, I met at conferences and Gary and I are at the standards committee and so on. Um, we brainstorm how we can join the forces. And it looks like the most natural place to join forces is on the, at the MLIR level. Uh, so MLIR is, as Gary mentioned, this is multi-level um, intermediate representation. Think of it as LLVM, but containing arrays and, and um, if statements. Um, and so uh, Alfotran should be able to generate MLIR uh, out of the um, as one of the backends, and then we can collaborate on the MLIR with optimizations and OpenMP and all that stuff. Uh, regarding the parser and the semantics, because L4 is interactive, it needs a little bit more extended parser. And as you know, parsing for turn is pretty hard, and so it, it needs to be designed in the parser. And, and, and the same with semantics, it needs to understand that you can have these loose statements on the global level. Let's see, does l and possible LVM try to also track purely semantic content without, um, which won't affect outcome, like say two programmatically identical expressions, um, or do they strip out redundant or solid listing information? Oh, okay, so the question is, are we throwing away things that don't influence the logic of the code, I think? Uh, Except, yes, right now we do, we'll have to preserve uh, comments because we want to be able to extend the Fortran language with pragmas and things like that. Um, maybe another way to ask, is source AST step reversible? Not currently, that's the big issue. The reason is if you want it, it will slow down the parser. And one of the, and so it might, maybe it might mean that we need a new parser just to be uh, reversible one-to-one. -one. Uh, and, and, and so because speed of compilation is one of the, big goals that I think as a user, I would really like for, for big, big Fortran projects. It's really helpful if in debug mode, in order to default development mode, you can compile it very quickly. Um, and so for that, you want to be able to kind of throw away everything that you don't need for the compilation itself. The only thing you want to track is the line and column information for each node for, error, for good error messages. Um, uh, and so, yeah, maybe we, we, we need to have some optional AST nodes and have a parser that can populate those to be reversible. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tough, tough problem and I have to kind of prioritize. So uh, for now, I'm just concentrating on the compiler itself. Let's see, could L4Tran AST or ASR be used as good starting point to transpile Fortran to WebAssembly uh, or similar or to run Fortran in the browser? Yes. So LLVM can do already the WebAssembly. But of course, there, there might uh, be some tweaks might be required. And so ASR is the best, uh, best starting point. ASR is the starting point anytime you want to transpile Fortran to anything, whether LLVM or um, uh, WebAssembly or C++ or any, any other, or, or just creating wrappers. Um, yes, WebAssembly is very important. A lot of Mozilla, for example, has a huge project porting the Python stack to the browser. And as you know, SciPy is, is mostly written in Fortran, or maybe like 30% of it is in Fortran. So uh, having being able to transform Fortran to WebAssembly is, is uh, very important. Let's see. 